Hey, people, this is the time. I mean, we are legitimately worth a shit this year. Oh, yes, we are. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, outsiders of all ages, the outsiders are back at full power on this Wednesday because the lower right <laughs> has returned we will get you your full introductions but first we remind you it is the outsiders <laughs> brought to you by poncho <laughs> and the masters is coming up don't forget about the oh, magnolia man. it is the beautiful green shirt that poncho has not even bow in the glasses can distract me from this beautiful garment <laughs> poncho outdoors dot Com. It's a what are you drinking Wednesday. Your upper left is the quarterback chance mock chance. What are we drinking? Well, I, I was just drinking MVP vodka, but in, in lieu of the fact that Bo is a little less than a week early on his solar eclipse glasses, mm -hmm. I'm going to be drinking some moon mist. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well done. Well played. Your lower right tonight is oh. Jason Dick, the returning champion. What are we drinking, Jason? Ah, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good to see you. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've been all banged up recently, so I didn't know if it was a good idea to drink a, a gallon of Fago moon mist. And so I have only a very normal Gatorade Zero um, that I'll be enjoy I'll be enjoy I will not be enjoying it, uh, however, because in my opinion, guys, the flavors of Gatorade are just red or blue or yellow. And when I, you mm. know, I go to the store, I'm like, I'm feeling like a red today. I'll get a red. And so I grabbed a yellow, and I just thought it was gonna. I I, I was just like, it's gonna be lime. It is lime cucumber. Okay, this is a lime cucumber Ooh. Gatorade Zero. I don't That's know. Fancy. I'm sure there have been market studies and focus groups, but did anybody ever say we need cucumber flavored Gatorade? I doubt it. Oh, nobody on this show. I doubt it. <laughs> they say it's refreshing. They say it is refreshing. Oh. And your lower left tonight, the country gorilla. Oh, yeah. Don't stare into the eclipse. Oh, too. yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing more rare than an eclipse. Is Jason Dick actually showing up? So I figured I didn't want my, I didn't want to get blinded, so I had to put on my shades at least for a moment. Yeah, it appears it's all going to be okay. Yeah. Don't stare directly at Jason Dick on the show Ooh, for three. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I haven't been outdoors in like a month, so uh, if you look at me, I probably I probably do I look blindingly white. <laughs> Bo, are those those glasses that fold up that roll up and you can just pinch them on your head like a slap bracelet? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think the school was going to do for the kids, but you know, I figured what the heck. The slap bracelet glasses are in full effect. By the way, uh, Macho, what, what you, Eclipse Macho Man, what are you drinking tonight? <laughs> what, what do you got to go along with the Eclipse glasses tonight there, this Mach? This is a delicious, spicy ranch water. Ooh. I don't know the brand, but it tastes good, and it's like a jalapeno. It does have cucumber mm -hmm. in it, though, Jason, so it'll really? be okay. Jalapeno, lime, and cucumber, and habanero. It's good. Cucumber doesn't even taste like anything, all right? It tastes like water. It, well, it, it tastes like fresh Jason. I don't know. It tastes the taste like dirt. of agave nectar, limes, jalapeno, and cucumber. So, cucumber, I don't know. The, the cucumber Gatorade tastes like dirt. I don't, are they grown in the dirt? Did the, did the cucumber come off a tree? I don't know. Does it, is yeah. it born from a, a cucumber mom? I don't know how they make cucumbers, but <laughs> I'm not enjoying it. Spe Speaking of tasty, I'm going with a little deep eddy orange vodka, a little touch of uh, vanilla tonight. Mm. Man. It's tasty. It's tasty. <laughs> I went dry for half of March, so I'm just getting back to it tonight with a little deep eddy vodka. We hope everybody's having a good Wednesday evening. Uh, oh, there's Chris Bennett with a little, ooh, yeah, snap into a Slim Jim. Slim Jim does sound good tonight, Chris Bennett. Uh, I would we rather have Slim Jim flavored Gatorade. All right, then lime cucumber. And lime cucumber. Yes. Uh, Chris Bennett also says, what's up to the pale males? And Shane has a theory of tonight that Chance may not be happy. We're going to have to find out whether or not Chance Mock is happy or not happy about losing one of his receivers in Buffalo. We will definitely get to that discussion pretty quick, I'm sure. Gentlemen, before we do that, since we are on Orange Bloods Live, let's throw out a little Longhorn football topic. We are about six practices in, so almost halfway through spring practice. By the way, 
For the third time in the last three weeks, we are saying we hope Jeff Ketchum is going to join us later in the show. Jeff, as far as I know, is not dealing with crazy stuff at the house, and he has overcome the flu to a degree that we think he'll join the show. Eight, uh, excuse me, at nine o'clock. That's the goal. So the cross- text message said yes, but yes. you know, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> cross- I've also gotten text messages from Jason before that said say, yes. I've, I've, I've also said yes before. Out. Sorry, sorry. That's true. Sometimes, that is true. Sometimes but things gen- happen. Gentlemen, what we're throwing out tonight is, and we, and we will certainly throw this to you guys on the Specs chat as well. Jeff Ketchum's going to talk to us about some of the battles that are going on and which ones are more meaningful than others and all that stuff. But let's talk about the guys we want to emerge from spring as studs. Chance, I'm going to start with you. And you've said it. You know better than anybody that some of spring, especially a spring game, it can be orchestrated and it can be turned and directed a certain way. So when it's all said and done, give me somebody you want to see emerge as a star when that spring game is over. So, okay, mine might be a little surprising, but I need to see we're, we're losing some big shoes at linebacker this year, some big shoes. And we've got a young freshman that played really, really well last year. I thought he stepped into the role and played the role well. I think we could have used him a little differently in spots. But he needs to, for me, he needs to step up and fill the shoes of Ford and become the guy in the middle of that defense that's causing havoc, Anthony Hill. Anthony Hill, that'd be big. Big zero is going to be huge for this team. Uh, Jason Dick, what about you? Give me somebody you want to see uh, blossom in the spring. I mean, I, I'm just going to take the entire wide receiver room. I'm, I guess if you made me pick <laughs> one one guy, I'd say Jontae Cook. But uh, after all of the guys that they were the, the, the Longhorns are losing to the NFL, all the pass catcher, catchers, that's where they need help. That's where they need somebody to to step up. So yeah, I'm going to say uh, all of the wide receivers, all of the pass catchers. Look at that. He's taking every pa- every wide receiver, Bo. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to take a defensive back to put his crap in place. <laughs> I want to see Andrew Makuba. Like, I want to see the local boy that I get why he went somewhere else. I get why he was a big enough recruit and why he wanted to go play for Clemson, who at the time that he left was coming off back-to-back trips to the playoff. You had Dabo Swinney. You had a lineage of sending guys to the NFL that Texas, honestly, was not at that point. So while all of us that lived here and grew up Longhorns how could you grow up near Austin and not come to Texas? Well, because the program was a dumpster fire. And he chose to go take the career path that made the most sense for him. But then had an epiphany and said, I'm coming back because now they're good. And I want to be with my hometown Longhorns. I want to see that work out. And I want to see the most depleted area of the field for us last year was the back end of the secondary. We were susceptible to getting beat over the top. I, I think he's the kind of guy that can stop that. So I want to see Andrew Makuba. Yeah. And he ironically found himself playing for a coach that ignored the portal completely. So he thought, I got to get into portal because this man doesn't know about the portal. Uh, and so he's found his way to a different shade of orange. Uh, let us know what you think in the specs chat. Uh, who you want to see step up, who you want to see become a star at the end of spring. Since Jason Dick took all those receivers, I'll just throw out another name on defense uh, like the other like the other two guys did, Jason. I'm going to say Alfred Collins. I'm going to say if Alfred Collins comes out of spring playing like he looks, because he looks incredible all the time, if he starts to match that up, and make people think, okay, you're going to miss Sweat, and you're going to miss Murphy, but if 95 is a badass and and is just throwing dudes around, I think that'll be huge as well. So I'll take Alfred Collins. Since you took all the receivers, I would have taken one, but since you took them all, I'll take 95. I'd also like to take all of the edge rushers as well. (laughs) Texas, 39th in the country in sacks last year. That is unacceptable for a team of this uh, this caliber. I understand there's this young man named Colin Simmons people have talked about, so maybe I'll I'll take him as well. But I would just like to take all of the edge rushers as well. I'll I'll take the entire line and all the quarterbacks. I'm building my roster over here. Yeah, and I have all the special teams and all the coaches as well. There you go. Okay. I think it'd be fun to see, and Blackshear's another one. I mean, a guy, another guy that's that's coming from Alabama. He's a big physical guy. I think he's one that I'd like to see him kind of insert himself into the conversation as well. The funny thing about that, what you mentioned with Blackshear, 
the guy that I'm rooting for to come out of that is the guy that's been here for three or four years. And I think this could be his year. I think Blackshire might be on the outside looking in because I think David Benda is going to keep growing from where he was at last year, where he'd work himself into the rotation. I think he was a project when he got here. And I think he is truly becoming a, a professional level linebacker. And I don't think Benda's going to give up the field. And I want to, I want to see that I'm rooting for the guy. I think it's a really good problem to have. If you can keep rolling yes. linebackers out there. <laughs> 17 days till the spring game today. It is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Uh, we will get to that trade. A Texan, a new Texan was a bill. And as one of our chatters points out, it really kind of affects all four of us. So we're going to get to that. But first, let's get to what to do to maintain, Bo, in case things get a little crazy in the NFL or somewhere else. The folks might need a little rogue shop. Tell them about it. They very well might. Whether you need help with sleep, anxiety, whatever you need, Rogue Shop has a product for you. Pre-rolls, gummies, the whole nine yards. They have a new product out that I am not familiar with, but I'm sure some of the people on this show and many of the people on Orange Bloods can be. I've read that it is a it's a good time. Outsiders10 is the is the promo code. Get you 10% off your order. Scan the QR code right there. Rogue Shop, Texas-based company. You need to check them out. There you have it. It is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Shout out to Rogue Shop and all of the great partners. All right, speaking of partners, uh, Chance knows this guy pretty well, and he brings up a good point. Trevor says today's trade just messes with almost all of y'all. I think it's technically all of us since Chance is a Bills fan, Bo is a Titans fan, which obviously the Texans division, and then Jason and I are both Cowboys fans, and therefore whatever the Texans do kind of affects us a little bit. So, Chance, we got to start with you. This uh, Bills bowling pin had a tear running down it a little earlier today because <laughs> it was sorry to see Stefan Diggs go. Are you sorry to see him go? Well, first of all, let me wrap this into where the Cowboys are involved because now y'all get to be involved with tweets back and forth because you'll get to see the shit show that is the Diggs brothers and their unbelievable ability to say the dumbest shit possible on Twitter, okay? First of all, Stefan, good luck to you. Texans, have fun. The people laughing right now are the people in Minnesota because when we took on the project that was Stefan Diggs, which, by the way, they ended up getting a guy named Justin Jefferson. I'm not saying that didn't work out really well for them with the 22nd pick. I regress. Let me tell you some numbers. 2021 versus Kansas City in the AFC Championship. Six targets, three receptions, seven yards. 2022 against Cincinnati. Ten targets, four receptions, 35 yards. 2023 against Kansas City, eight tar targets, three receptions, 21 yards. I'm sorry, the guy doesn't show up in big games. He hasn't since he's been there. He's been a distraction to the team. I, I've had to deal with a freaking teenager for the last four years because every day Stefan's tweeting something. It's a, He gets mad after games that we lose. He throws a fit. Josh Allen might throw less interceptions because he's not forcing balls into a guy that he knows if I don't get the ball to him, he's going to have a hissy fit on the sideline. So, look, I wish Steph well. There's an argument. Well, number one, he's not a wide receiver number two. I mean, number one in Houston. Nico Collins is their guy. He's a maybe wide receiver number two, maybe three, depending on what Schultz or Tank Dell are doing because those two guys, I think you're – have inherited first final thing Josh Allen you don't think he signed off on this you think there's a chance in hell that he gets out of Buffalo and Josh Allen didn't say fine you think Buffalo didn't want him gone when they're willing to take on a 31 million dollar dead cap hit for a second rounder next year <laughs> that's what he meant to you Houston did us a favor he he took him off our hands because nobody else wanted him so, sayonara, sir. Wow. All right. Chance is ready to help him pack. Uh, Bo Edge, as a fan of somebody in the Texans division, are you more worried today than you were about Houston? Well, yeah, because everything Chance said is true. But, sorry, Chance, he had to live in Buffalo. <laughs> and if that ain't your world 
and you don't like it cold, I, I would love it. You love it. But that might not be Stefan Diggs' world. So maybe moving to Houston where he assimilates. He has people that he knows in the Houston area. He's got family in Dallas with his brother. Maybe this changes. I don't know. Reinvigorates. I, I'm trying to find the other side of the coin because I think it was a great move by Buffalo. I think they cut a cancer out of their organization. And hopefully for the Texans, who I'm not a fan of, but my son is and my wife is, he can get his head to the reality that this is the second time a team has sold you for spare parts. Like, at what point does your ego realize that it might be you a little bit that's causing some of the problems? And with a young QB like C.J. Stroud, because if C.J. Stroud can rein Stephon Diggs in, that will only be one more arrow in his quiver to the rest of the world that he is the true alpha male and the true leader of a franchise, and he is next in the pecking order as he climbs the chart. Hmm. Jason, I was already, as a Cowboys fan, thinking the Texans were – you know, headed in a better direction than the Cowboys. And I saw this today and I thought, oh, good Lord, here we go. But now I'm listening to the people like Chance talk and I've listened to other people talk about it today and I've simmered a little bit, but give me your thought as a Cowboys fan, how this sort of looks to you and, and now how do you perceive Houston? Yeah, I, I mean, we, I don't really think of them as much of a rival, but I have always enjoyed them being kind of mediocre. And uh, so it is It is unfortunate that C.J. Stroud is going to be great. And if Stefan Diggs can behave himself, they are going to be an incredible force uh, to, you know, to deal with. But I think, you know, everything Chance said is probably correct. OK, he probably is totally washed. But here's a problem. Bo, they didn't he was not sold for spare parts the first time. OK, Buffalo paid. Well, I mean, what was it, uh, uh, Chance? A, a first, a second, a fourth, a fifth? Like, it was a million picks. And now they're get, getting just a second back for him? Like, you bought a house in 2020 and you sold it in 2022, okay? It's not good. <laughs> the, the return on investment no, is, I, not, is not tremendous. But keep in mind, when Minnesota traded Stephon Diggs, he was an absolute megastar. He had just made big plays to get the Vikings into the – into the playoffs, he made he was the guy. Normally, teams don't trade a top five, top sure. eight in the league wide receiver sure. at the prime of his career when he's under contract, unless it's a problem. Yes, they did get some picks and they did turn to those picks into Jeff and Jefferson. But do you think the Cowboys are looking to trade CD Lamb for some picks right now? No, <laughs> of course not. Um, so that's what I'm saying. He was that guy, he was no. where CD was at, he was where Justin Jefferson was at, he was where Jamar Chase is at, you know. He's he was the man. And when you have that guy wrapped up, you don't trade him unless he's a problem. So obviously he was a problem. No, he's he you're you're right. He's obviously problematic. And why is it chance maybe you know about this. That position, wide receiver. They always they are the troublemakers. The <laughs> the TOs, the Randy Mosses, the now I'm just naming old guys. Chad Ochocinco. Sloan Thomas is popping fireworks during our <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You really are teeing this one up for the quarterback. You know, Chance, what, those why? receivers are always a problem, aren't why, they? Why is it always that position that uh, creates the divas and, and the troublemakers? I, I think it comes with the mentality of playing that position. It's a very – it's a physical position, so I don't want to knock it, but it's a finesse position, right, that gets a lot of glory. They make the spectacular catches, right? What does a running back do? He makes great runs, but they're hard. They're making cuts. They're making people miss. Wide receivers do things like Odell Beckham Jr., and they make those fantastic catches that are like – the it's highlight, right? You go up and you moss somebody. I mean, the kids today are all over the world still going, throwing stuff up on people going, you got mossed, right? Like – that's what gives them that head is that their highlights are played mm. over and over. And it's a diva position. Let's, let's, let's be real about yeah. it. But, you know, I think it's, I think it's kind of funny, Bo, you, you brought that. This is an interesting thing to think about. People in Buffalo today were saying, well, it's, it's kind of odd that they got a second from next year. Right. But if you look at what the bills are doing, they have 11, 12 now picks this year, they got rid of Diggs. Nobody in their right mind would think it was a knee-jerk reaction. We're getting rid of our wide receiver one. No matter what kind of a pain in the ass he is, they have a plan in place. There's something that they're trying to do. They know what they're going. You don't get rid of a guy like Stefan Diggs and go, all right, well, we'll figure it out when we get there. Like You don't do that. You don't take on $31 million in a dead cap hit. What it screams to me is 
they're about to compile a bunch of picks and they're going to make a, a Josh Allen type move that they made and they're going to get up in the top 10 and they're going to go after a guy like Adunza. That, that's that's what I think is going to happen. Well, I think that's a possibility or what I've been reading all ever since this trade went down is trying to get into the giant spot at nine and get Malik neighbors. Right. But I think you talked about it. I think there's a much higher likelihood that they're not just going for one. They're going for two. And I think there's a decent chance that one of the two Longhorn receivers will follow them at the back end of the first. And that's who they're going for. Whether that's Adonai Mitchell or Xavier Worthy, I think those two guys fit their system Mm -hmm. because you need somebody to replace the speed and quickness of Diggs. Well, there is nobody in this draft more like that than Worthy. That's not taking anything away from the Harrisons or Dunzes or the two from LSU. They're all exceptional receivers, but they don't fit the exact spot that they're trying to fill. And A.D. Mitchell is literally Gabe Davis reincarnated from a size standpoint. I'm not talking about skill, just the size and the, the length and the high pointing of footballs. I'm making it very Longhorn specific, but I think the Bills are targeting not one, but two weapons at the front end of the draft. And we'll right. let's bring it back to those weapons. Chance, hold that thought one second. It is the Outsiders. We'll take a breath and let Covert Ford tell you about what they can do, and we'll talk, get Chance's thoughts on those two Texas receivers and which one he would want as a Bills fan. Don't move. Well, says Texas proud more than a Ford from Covert Ford of Austin. Deeply rooted in Texas history, the Covert family has taken great pride for over 114 years. That's why you can always depend on Covert Ford to deliver the best customer experience and a superior selection of new Ford vehicles. Shop online at CovertFord.com. All right, Chance Mock, let's do it this way. I saw a mock draft today with three Longhorns in the first round. Of course, Murphy going first and then the two receivers. I've seen a mock with Mitchell going to Buffalo. I've seen a mock with Worthy going to Buffalo. Which would you rather have if you get it, pick, if you get your pick? I, so I think it, it's kind of changed a little bit today because my number one was Mitchell from the get-go. I liked his size, his quickness. I think he offers a lot that they need. I think the problem is with what happened today, you're either going to have to do one or two things. You're either have to going to bump up to the middle of the pack, depending on how much you want to give up. And and I think right there, Worthy, to, to me, Worthy is the guy they have to go after first now. If you're just saying the two Texas guys, because I don't know, I think A.D. Mitchell is going to be a star in the NFL. I worry about him having to be the number one receiver on a team right now. Whereas I think, I mean, Mitchell, whereas Worthy, I think is a guy that with his speed and versatility, I think there's more that you can do with him. They can get him in the game with the screens. He can beat you on the deep routes. Like he's got more of an ability early. Long run, I think A.D. Mitchell's the guy. I think he needs a year to develop. Yeah, Bo, you sounded like you were leaning towards Mitchell for Buffalo. I think if Buffalo has a strategy, which we don't know that, Chance just hopes that. (laughs) If Buffalo has an actual strategy, then I think Mitchell's the better fit. And this isn't a knock on Buffalo, and I'm not messing with you, but there is something about fast twitch athletes being in fast environments, on turf, in Miami. It's not what's probably going to happen. Worthy's going to end up in KC or Buffalo or wherever, but I'd love to see Worthy get on a fast track and get to showcase the part that makes him great. So for me... I wouldn't put Worthy in Buffalo. Now, A.D. Mitchell fits like a glove. Josh Allen is an improv quarterback, loves to run around. Who have you, for Texas, who made more plays on the fly when Quinn was flustered or when Malik Murphy was flustered, where he just went and made a play on the damn ball? It it wasn't about superior route running. It wasn't about superior speed. And he has both of those. A.D. Mitchell, he's a football player. Like he's and he's done it at multiple locations. You don't play at Georgia and be one of the stars, and then come to Texas and be one of the stars unless you have star power in you. And I, that's why I think AD Mitchell is the best fit. Interesting, Jason. What do you think about Buffalo's situation here? Um, I mean, I I guess I agree with what uh, what Bo was saying. I would rather I think AD Mitchell is going to be the better receiver long term. All right, and I think it's real interesting oh. uh, that uh, Chance thinks 
Xavier Worthy could be. I mean, are you saying he he would be impactful next year? You guys are rebuilding, man. Okay, it's a rebuilding. You could have won the Super Bowl last year, and now you're rebuilding. You have a thirty-one million dollar cap hole. Uh, you could say you really digged yourself a hole. Oh, uh, wow! No, no we digged ourselves out of a hole. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, yeah, I, I would, oh. my expectations for the team would be low next year. So I would go with AD Mitchell and, and, and play the long-term game. So first of all, Darwin, yeah, it's a next year's pick. You can still trade that in, in a trade. So regardless, I, here, here's the thing that you're forgetting about. And it was mentioned in the chat box over there. They have Dalton Kincaid. They have, um, Dawson Knox. Okay. Those are two guys that are highly involved in their offense as it is. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be a big – so we've got Curtis Samuel. We've got – everybody keeps sleeping on Khalil Shakir. The dude is a star waiting to happen. He really is. He is like a lot of those receivers that we've seen at the Rams and everything else. Ton of speed, great routes, gets open, catches the damn ball. His catch, his catch rate is huge. So, I mean, you can put any of those receivers – in that offense that we don't run an offense that has five wide receivers. We're not in the Miami dolphins. I think people think of Josh Allen and they think it's a spread team. It's not, it's a team that likes to run the ball 30, 32 times a game. We wanted to become a team that can run the ball because we're in Buffalo and by God in the freaking playoffs, it's hard to throw the ball in Buffalo. So we didn't want to be the dolphins. All right, chance. So we don't turn this into Buffalo bills radio. I'm going to give you one more suggestion that the bills should do. That does actually tie into Texas before Chad brings Jeff Ketchum on. There is a safety from the 40 acres that just left Seattle that would be a perfect fit for what Buffalo is. A guy that loves to hit people. A guy that has a great nickname in Quandre the Giant. Can you tell your Bills people to bring in a Longhorn and go get Quandre and make him a Bill? I would love that move. <laughs> Especially the fact that Jordan Poyer just went down to freaking Miami. and It's like our love in Buffalo never happened. You well, just, if you had a choice between Miami and Buffalo, you, if you were smart, you'd take Miami too. Be an inter- no. That would be an interesting spot for Quandre too. Also playing in front of another crazy, uh, hey, you know, crazy the house, last crazy group of fans. Safety they had was pretty damn good in Aaron Williams, and yep. injuries kind of took that down a path that it didn't need to go down. So let's see if Quandre can go resurrect that Longhorn Buffalo Bills legacy. There you go. All right. Uh, we do hopefully have Jeff Ketchum coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Before we do that, Bo is going to get you thinking about something. Maybe you're not thinking about it right now, but once you see this picture, you're going to want to think about it, and that's your next badass vacation. Oh, yeah. Bo, tell them about Engage. Oh, I love Engage. They make it so damn easy. I just got done finishing the payment on a trip that I'm taking my wife on for a delayed 20th anniversary present in June. We're going to Cancun, Mexico, scoped it out, sent my guy Chad. He said, this is not a family trip. This is a romantic trip. What's the best? And he gave me multiple options with prices. We, we worked through the process. Already have the dinners booked. Everything's done. Pick you up at the airport, done. Take you to the airport after it's over, done. You literally show up, give them your ID, put on a wristband, and the next, everything's taken care of. So... That's what, if you want your vacation to be like that, Engage Vacations is where you go. Scan the QR code, give them a call, 922-3322. That's 512-922-3322. Whether it's Mexico, Fiji, the Caribbean, Hawaii, a Disney vacation, whatever you're looking for, they can help you out. And they, it's no charge. They don't, you don't pay a fee. It's free to you. Give them a look, Engage Vacations. You ever notice that everybody kind of humble brags when they go to Cancun and they say Mexico? Oh. You don't need to say Mexico, but you feel like you should yeah. say it. I'm going to Cancun, Mexico. There's no Cancun, Minnesota, but you just feel like you need <laughs> to tell everybody that you're going to Mexico. One, there's 10,000 lakes in Minnesota. You don't know if one of them is named Lake Cancun. I know you know everything, Craig Way Hastings, but there yeah. might be a Cancun somewhere in the continuous 48. I don't think anybody's ever told me they're going to one of those places without finishing it with Mexico. You I mean, know we're going hell, to Cabo there's a Zero. con can down on the Frio, so you still want them to be confused. Can That's I just right. can I just say props to Bo? 20 years? You've been married 20 years? 
People know my policy on that. That is two forevers, okay? That is two forevers. <laughs> two forever. Yes, we had the celebration. It was just last week, wasn't it, Bo? It was. You want to know how awesome my wife is? And <laughs> humble brag, if you will. Mm -hmm. My present was she ordered the, the food of the Masters. That was my anniversary oh, present. Nice. And was going to have a party with all my friends to watch the Masters. I unfortunately had to fly to California for a work-related event. Mm -hmm. So we're having the party on Sunday. You're invited, by the way, Jason and Chad, if you want to drive mm -hmm. up Cedar Parkway. But the egg salad, the pimento cheese, the pulled pork, the cups, the whole nine yards. She's throwing a Masters-themed 20th anniversary party because she's just cool like that. You know what the worst part is? Is I had to. This is me being a true professional, guys. While Bo was doing his read, and he was like, this is not a vacation for the kids. It's an anniversary vacation. You know, it's for adults only. It took everything in my soul, not in the back of that commercial, go, bow, chicken, bow, bow. <laughs> it's a romantic vacation. That's what he said, romantic. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You know what? The most important thing, Chance, is that you did it now. Like, yeah. that's the important thing. You eventually got there. You got it out of your system. Because if I don't get those things out of my system, they just turn into ulcers. So you don't want that to happen. <laughs> You do not want that to happen. All right, we're getting a lot of good stuff on the Specs chat as we wait for Jeff Ketchum. Let's clean a couple things off here. Bo, Macho Bo, someone <laughs> is giving you the opportunity. I've been trying to do it for a while. Bo, you need to come home to your city. Get off the lap of Bud Adams. Are you prepared now that Stefan Diggs will be wearing that red, white, and blue to become a Houston fan again? Houston. If you're talking about the Astros, yes. Oh, if you're boy. talking about the Texans, no. Man. I will be a C.J. Stroud fan. I, I think he's awesome, and I love watching him grow. But you don't, you don't switch teams because of a player. You don't switch teams on a whim. I was an Oilers fan. They became the Titans. I threw my allegiance to the Titans, and for the rest of my life, even though they piss me off and their front office is a freaking shit show, mm -hmm. and the Adams family can all – crawl in a hole and die wow. wow the whole family they are not invited to the masters party amy adams kiss my ass but i will be a titans fan until the day that i die all right fair enough i don't Darwin. even like john quincy adams just for the affiliation now like what my president's list i don't even like the adams that were presidents darwin we tried we tried uh, our man Chad has a Cowboys perspective. He says, Jerry needs to take notes. What the Texans are doing is going all in. Jerry talks about going all in, but doesn't exactly feel like that's what the Cowboys are doing. Uh, then uh, Chris Bennett throws in, this is unnecessary. Houston gets to the conference championship game before Dallas. Maybe, CB. At this point, maybe. <laughs> I can't. What? what, what if, look at me and Jason right now. Are we mad? Are we arguing? <laughs> Are we flipping out? No, we know we know what we're staring, what we're looking at. On the on the on the point of going all in, the Texans are able to do this. They're able to take on Stephen Diggs because they have a, a quarterback on a rookie deal. All right, Dak Prescott makes a billion dollars every year. Okay, <laughs> they are cap they are are uh, in cap trouble as well. So you can't just go out and get whoever you want. Hey, hey, it's but true. just wait, Jason. When y'all let Dak walk after this year. You'll have Trey Lance on the equivalent of a rookie deal because he ain't going to make shit. So you roll with the Lance. Very nice. Uh, Chris Bennett, thank you for jumping in on the Specs chat. Also, thank you for Michael jumping in. What's up? Uh, oh, what's up, fuckers, with the asterisk. Uh, FWF and the Outsiders are my favorite on Orange Bloods. Michael, Alex is now on in the mornings, in case you missed that uh, schedule change. He's on the uh, old-fashioned show in the mornings. He's on the modcast twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So be sure to hunt him down. But we are glad you're here with us on a Wednesday on The Outsiders. And for Miles, who's asking about the baseball team, how are they doing? Well... They did beat ACU 11 to 1 uh, yesterday. Hey, Shout out to Jalen Flores, gentlemen. Four for five, three runs scored, five RBIs, including two home runs. But, Bo, they have won their conference series so far. They haven't been terrific, but they have won two out of three in conference every time. They're six and three in conference, beat the team that was leading the conference last week in Kansas State. And I got to say this it takes some serious balls 
to have your ace go out and lose that first game that way and then come back and beat Kansas State twice on the road at their house. Like, I'm sorry. That's what Pierce, whether it succeeds or fails, time will tell. But this is what Pierce does. And everybody that goes on Orange Bloods or any on Twitter, every year this is the Pierce story. He's not trying to win. I mean, he's not mad at winning in March, but his goal isn't March. His goal is to build a championship DNA, to build that resiliency from getting kicked in the nuts and getting up. And he puts his pitchers through this. If you don't, like, Ace Whitehead is going to be like Justin Simmons 2.0. He's going to, not as good as Justin, but that kind of pitcher where he's going to just go out there and bulldog his way to seven or eight innings. And he does he can't break a pane of glass. Ace Whitehead can't break 88 miles an hour if you paid him. But you know what he can do? He can maneuver around. He can get guys out. Max Grubbs is doing the same thing. That's who Pierce is. This is a team that's starting to resemble their coach. It's just going to be a scrappy bulldog. And you, there is no game that Texas is going to put up, get on the field. And you're just going to be assured they're going to win. This isn't like they're walking around better or they don't have that guy. But I, I like where this team's going. I'm going to the game on Saturday because – a good friend of mine is the tradition. He wouldn't come on as a guest because he's not quite the most talkative kind of guy, but it is Danny people's day at the Uh dish on Saturday. And I will be there with my son rooting it on. What a weekend for Bo now master's party. He's going to the Texas game. That's not dirt bag. Is that dirt bag people's or is that Nick people's is dirt bag people's Nick people's Nicky is dirt bag. Amongst other nicknames that Nicky has Danny was back in 95 was his last year when he was big 12 God. or sorry he was the last southwest conference offensive player of the year before the big 12 was formed okay um and didn't didn't win a title so can't get his number or playing a championship game so his number will not be retired but that's what that tradition is about it's about getting guys that have earned it on the field that were all americans and all conferences and like danny first round pick of the indians you know, it's just, it's a really neat deal. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of traditions, uh, in terms of baseball, it's going to be the uh, two straight religiously scheduled weekends, if you will, uh, for Texas. The Easter stuff is one thing, but with BYU coming in, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday again. So just adjust your brain that way. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they will host BYU at The Dish if you want to get out there and check them out. All right. I have sent an additional message to Jeff Ketchum to see if he's coming on. We will see if he does. We yeah. think Ketch still likes us. We are going to test it out. I'm he's really Jason Dick in this, this thing. <laughs> he, really, <laughs> he really kind of is. He really is. Now, let me remind you, if we get Jeff Ketchum or if we don't, all of our great guests are brought to you by Last Stand Hats. Let's just show you that hat. Because it's there. It's right up here. I got one right up here. The white version. There's 12 different designs of the Outsiders hat. Use your code OUTSIDERS10. We were just talking baseball. If you don't have an Occupy left field cap, oh, they got those. Want a DBU hat? They've got those. All gas, no brakes? Yep. They've got you covered. Maybe you're an SMU fan and you got a new basketball coach and you're pumped. Last Stand Hats can help you there as well. Last Stand Hats, the true fans brand bringing us all of our guests whether they actually join us or not that is the metaphysical part of the outsiders all right so we've dealt with stefan Diggs to the texans anything else we need to hit their chance you've you feel like you processed your feelings there you good you good to go i'm good and i will tell you the funniest clip that i saw today it's amazing where people can find clips so quick but there was one from like two years ago and it was Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, and uh, Tom Brady playing golf. And Brady goes, oh, I got my receiver Mike Adams out here. And I mean, um, Devontae, well, he left Aaron. Tyreek, you know, he left uh, whatever. Mahomes. And he goes, Josh, don't worry. Yours is coming. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it happens. And it did happen today. Texans fans um, get pretty excited there. Put in, uh, put digs in at receiver, mixing in at running back. Texans trying to build something uh, from what they did last year. And obviously they did a lot last year as well. Um, we are obviously closing in on the Texas spring game, 17 days away. Today's 150 days till the first game for Texas. And uh, we're again, we're, if we get Jeff Ketchum on, we'll talk about some of the practice stuff. 
that's going on. Um, guys, one of the things that came out of the last couple of days, Sark did make a point to mention a freshman after practice. And it was one of those receivers Jason was talking about. It was Ryan Wingo getting a little bit of love. The man who took A.D. Mitchell's number five was getting a little love after practice. And uh, that's the kind of thing, Chance, every time I hear it or a fan hears it, I think we now start to get a little cynical to, okay, is he saying it because the guy's playing like a badass? Or is he saying it because he feels like the guy needs to hear it? Or is he saying it because he feels like a recruit needs to hear it? All that kind of stuff. So in 2024, when you hear that, that he calls out Wingo specifically, when asked for one guy, he said Ryan Wingo's name, how big a deal is that to you? I think I think perspective is a lot of things too, right? Like you've got a new guy that's a freshman. What he does and maybe on the same level as some of those other guys is going to stick out more because you still are going to remember this guy should be in high school right now. I'm personally rooting for the guy because I'd love to see a freshman come in and have a true impact like Roy and BJ were able to do when they came in. But, you know, I, I'm like, I'm like you, Chad. I, I'm very cynical when I hear that stuff. I think it's all about messaging. I think there's motive behind everything, but you know, so, so I'm, I'm kind of both. I'm, I'm optimistic in my heart. I want to believe it, but in my mind, I kind of know where that goes from. Bo, what do you think? Well, normally I'd agree with something like that, but with all the receivers that are at his disposal, like for him to single out Wingo, I think it was a twofold message. One, I think Wingo is doing well enough to warrant the praise, but I think it was a shot across the bow at a couple of the guys that either aren't performing up to the level that he wants them to at this point, or a couple of transfers like a Matthew Golden, who by most practice reports has not been acquitting himself as well as they had hoped. This was a motivational technique, but I think it was also calling it what it is. Ryan Wingo, when you watched his tape in high school, was an NFL receiver. Just like when your teammate Roy Williams, when you watched his tape, you're like, that guy's just bigger, stronger, faster, and better than the other guys. It doesn't matter. Like you, At any point, Roy Williams was going to play. It didn't matter who was on your receiving core. When he walked on the field, and B.J. Johnson was great, and Sloan Thomas was great, but Roy Williams was just different from a frame, from the intangibles, even when we had those guys on, they all like whether or not it was they liked it or not. Roy was the alpha amongst them from a field performance. I think Wingo's asserting himself, and that's why Sark called it out. He was letting everybody know he doesn't have to act like a diva. I'm making him a diva because he's that damn good. But but let me ask let me ask you guys this because maybe I just do it because I was at practices and I'd watch those kids. Do you not feel like when you're a freshman? you're given a little grace and you're almost, it bumps up your pedestal a little bit because in the back of your mind, you're still going, this kid is a freshman or this kid should be in high school. Like they may make a play that a junior or senior makes, but it just looks so much better because they are young. Well, you have no expectations. Right. Like, the, bar, the, the bar that probably is lower, uh, you know, for a guy who just showed up on, on campus. Mm-hmm. But I also think, Chance, it's the thing where nowadays you can be an early enrollee, meaning you get you get to meet Coach Becton way before guys used to, and you're getting into that part of it. And when you show up at that first spring practice, like Jason Sukumel of Orange Bloods went out there and took pictures when they put the galleries up and all that stuff. Some of those guys just look different. And when you see the picture of Wingo, Phil Simi, Simmons and then those guys you're like damn that's a freshman mm -hmm. and I think that factors into it as well these guys get ramped up faster than they used to back, back in your day like do you ever remember an early enrollee did you even have that phrase in your mind chance when you played at Texas no there was the one guy that I can think about and he was in the class before me he was in the class of 99 unfortunately didn't work out he was a hell of a talent was Tyrone Richardson and Tyro Richardson came in in December. And so he, he was an early enrollee, but that was the only one that I could do. It wasn't an option. I mean, kids are now starting to plan. I mean, we have conversations with my son's eighth grade counselor of, you know, is he trying to graduate spring or is he wanting to be able to graduate in December? And they're starting that in eighth grade, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, whether that's for sports or not, it wouldn't be because he plays baseball. So he, you don't leave early in that anyway, but um, you know, it's, 
I, I think it's a whole different world. Like it was such a foreign idea. If I'm not mistaken, Brock Berlin might have done it coming out of Evangel. Hmm. Um, that I be. think he did when he went to Florida early. Um, but anyway, regardless, he was one that I think maybe did. But other than that, it, it just wasn't heard of because you didn't think about it. Hell, we didn't really start seven on seven until my freshman year. And the kids are starting now when they're seven years old. Right. And this year, there are 20 of them, basically. 20 early enrollees. And Jason, a guy like Silas Bolden, he's now the freak. He's now the weirdo because he's, what do you mean you're finishing up school somewhere else and then transferring? Weirdo, you got to get in for spring practice. Bolden is now the outlier doing it that way. I, I would, do you think at all that these guys in any of them miss the end of their high school experience though? Like, I mean, I'm sure it's awesome to, you know, to be on, on campus, but like you're, you're a badass at your high school. Okay. You're the man. And you're just going to get up and leave. Like I would, I, I would, I would soak it up. I would, I would stay for a fifth year of high school. So, <laughs> well, I mean, you do a COVID year in high school. Hey, we know what McConaughey, McConaughey said about the the girls in high school, right? <laughs> but, but to your point, Jason, here's the, here's the only problem: is that senior year in high school, and I got mine, and you know, I really enjoyed it, and it was nice to have a break where the only thing I had to worry about was working out, and. You know, I did enjoy that. However, in today's game, you you're behind lose so much on that on that one semester. You you lose the spring practices. You lose a little bit of. It's not that you lose your eggs, but that competition. If you roll from your senior year in high school and you're right into spring football and you're never missing a beat as far as staying in that peak competitive shape. Really, I mean, you can train all all spring if you're in high school. But you're not out there doing seven on seven. You're not putting on pads. You're not blocking. You're not covering receivers. You're not running routes against live fire, you know? And I think, I think unless you're an absolute freak, it's hard to miss that. Well, and I think there's one other thing that really makes it more prevalent now. You're going to get paid. Like, it's one thing to miss your high school senior, you know, half of your <laughs> senior year. It's another thing to get a Lamborghini and go back to high school on your day off and say, hey, chicks. Point. I got this green Lamborghini and a bag of money. You want to go to McDonald's and get a milkshake? You're damn right they do. McDonald's? Wait, is that a Lamborghini? Take a green Lamborghini to McDonald's? <laughs> you're going to McDonald's? When you have a green Lamborghini, you can take the girl to McDonald's, no, and no. you'll still win. Nope, if you nope. take a girl to McDonald's in a green Lamborghini, uh, Lamborghini, do you take her in and throw pickles at the window? Yeah. <laughs> Because that's all you're getting tonight, Bo. If you take it to McDonald's, have you not seen all these TikToks and everything of of all these girls that are calling dudes out for taking them to like Sonic for their first date and everything else? It's like a thing. Like if you have a car now, now they're expecting you to take care of them. Well, Sham look, Chad, hey, the Shamrock Shake should be enough. All right, go Sham read Ocho Cinco's special. Twitter. He has made it abundantly clear he only takes ladies on dates to McDonald's in his Lamborghini, and Ocho does just fine. So I'm just saying. That <laughs> Wait, who's taking dates to McDonald's in a Lambo? Oh, Chad Johnson's famous for it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you're Chad yeah. Johnson there. You know what Chad Johnson's trying to do? He's got to make sure they like him for Chad Johnson. He's got to do something normal. Otherwise, well, they're no, just it, trying to date the famous athlete. Chad Johnson, is. I've loved following his career. I think his personality is great. Just... But what people don't realize, he's also the tightest guy in the NFL. Like, he kept every dollar he made, and he brags about it. Like, he wears all his bling, and he's like, you realize I get all this at Charming Charlie's? He goes, I wouldn't buy the real <laughs> shit. It's going to get me robbed, and I'm going to lose it. He buys $8 Charming Charlie's big old bling because he's like, I don't need the jewelry. He goes, I want the money. He said the oh, only thing he spends real dollars on is his cars and cigars. Everything else is wow. McDonald's and, and whatever. That's but – it, that's, that's a great way to make it through life. That's why you date girls. They're totally okay with margaritas at a hole in the wall Mexican restaurant and mod pizza for a date. Like that's you got to date those kind of girls because if they're expecting Perry's or Kirby's every night, life can get very difficult. 
Ocho Cinco shopping at Claire's for the jewelry. All right. Charming Charlie's. Enough. Get it right. Oh, sorry. The char- my bad. My bad. All it's right. The uh, hub is- of the mall. Charming Charlie's. It is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Got a lot of great partners around here, including Prosperity Roofing. Check them out. It's one of our favorite spots. You're about to find out why. I wish mine looked like that. Inappropriate. I don't know what the big deal is. Mine used to look like that. Is your new roof what everyone's talking about? A new roof from Prosperity Roofing will certainly draw some attention. Now that's what I'm talking about. Everything important in your life happens under your roof. Let Prosperity Roofing transform your home into something to talk about. All right, uh, it is the outsiders. Oh, couple with water, couple with the garden hose gets me every time. I get emotional. I get emotional every time. Shout out to <laughs> Prosperity Roofing for everything that they do. Bo, have we? Uh, do, do, do we have any chance of getting any of those great actors on the show at any point? Can we do that? Oh, I can try. Can we reach out? I would like. If I could get if I could get guy with phone on the show, or uh, <laughs> mine used to look like that lady. I really would love to talk to either one of them. That would be. I fantastic. mean, inappropriate. We Maybe yeah. they can be on your show. Maybe they maybe. can be house divided. It may, nine, nine o'clock at night may be a little late for roofers. They got to get up early in the morning. Yeah, but, that's true. That's true. But I am making a note right next to my legitimately worth the shit post-it note to get prosperity actors for Chad. Yeah, we will see what we <laughs> See what we can do there. It's fantastic. All right, let's uh, check the chat, see if there's anything there. Chris Bennett. Oh, Chris Bennett's in Washington State, missing Taco Cabana. That's a weird feeling to have, Chris Bennett, but okay. There hey, you go. Hey, Taco Cabana has the best drive through quesadillas of anywhere in the world. Love the Taco Cabana. I don't know what made Chris Bennett. And they sell it. margaritas now. Maybe it's because you said hole in the wall Mexican food place margarita. Maybe that's what he said. Okay. Hey. They, but they close at like 10 p.m. now. When I was in college, Taco Cabana was open all night because we would we would drink till 3:30, and then whoever was the most sober, we would drive there and get 20 tortillas and a bowl of queso, and that was that was a meal. Yes, right? it was so. Oh, good. Yeah, the one right there on MLK. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Except for for yeah. us, it was eggs Mexicana, eggs Mexicana, extra tortillas, boom. But now there they, they close at like 10 o'clock. By the way, Good, Bo, really? Bo, Darwin tells you that the, the roofers are drinking beer right now. So there's a chance that we could get a roofing person on. That's what that's what Darwin is saying. We might have a shot at dude okay, with I, I disagree with the premise because roofers start drinking right after the job. And then they go to bed early so they can wake up at 5 in the morning. They're not staying up late. Or they're All not. Right. Let's put it this way. They're not doing interviews at 930 at night. Maybe Fair I'm wrong. Enough. Fair, I'll reach out. Fair enough. I am not sure why people are throwing random orders in, but let's go, Phil. Two foot long <laughs> chili and cheese conies, two Reese's blasts, and tater tots. Now that's a date at Sonic right there. Yeah. That's the kind of date I can appreciate. I want, I'm sorry, but any date that involves two foot long conies is a little off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to watch my girl eat a chili cheese coney. <laughs> All right. like, sure if that. that's your date night order, you're one of the ones that was affected by Pornhub going down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. All right. <laughs> I can't top that. I can't top that one. Darwin says he is a contractor and he is up drinking beer. Uh, uh, in light of that, let me put on my, my solar eclipse shades. <laughs> yes, right. That's true. Hey, while we're mentioning... <laughs> While we're mentioning the Eclipse, Bo, let's go ahead and remind him again about this incredible golf tournament that is coming up. It's not just a golf tournament. You're not just helping a good cause, but it's going to get really crazy dark for like five minutes right in the middle of it. Uh, The Liberty Hill event out there at uh, Star Ranch. Yeah, you could wear shades like the ones I'm wearing. It's a great event at our sponsor, Star Ranch. This particular event is for the Liberty Hill Football Boosters Club, and it's very affordable. $500 $500 for a team for lunch included, prizes included. Like every other Monday golf tournament, you go have a few beers, you help a good cause. This one's special because you get to avoid all the weirdo science people that are going to be clogging up I-35 and doing weird eclipse things. You can go to the best place to watch the eclipse, a golf course, and you'll have fun and you'll avoid the crowds and you'll get to play great golf. 
for a great cause at a golf course that is perfect for scrambles. It's called the Liberty Hill 2024 Boosters Golf Tournament at Star Ranch. Oof. There you have it. Should be fun. Everybody be careful on Eclipse Day. I, like I said, and don't plan on winning it because somebody is going to claim that they made a hole-in-one or multiple eagles during the four-hour or four-minute darkness. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, there's I, be I was trying to convince and... Jason to get a team in it, and I hadn't told him that was my, my – when you get to this hole and it goes dark, just say it went in. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> hole-in-one, give me the truck. No doubt. Hey, Chance, I haven't checked with you. I know you're in the Houston area there in the Woodlands. Uh, are there schools taking off? Because we got like 12, 15 schools in the Austin area that aren't even having school on Monday for the Eclipse. Have you heard any of that? Oh, no. No, we're going to go to school, and I'm sure all of our bright, young, mushy minds that are out there are just going to go stare at the sun without their sunglasses while teachers yell at them not to do that. But Don't do that. No, we'll be in school unless the world ends. Because if you get on Twitter at all, all the crazies think this is some massive sign of something. I, I don't is this know. like Independence, the Independence Day movie, and all of a sudden aliens are going to start shooting laser beams out of the sky? Oh, apparently. Why? I don't think anything on Twitter. I'm confused. Why would the schools close? Why? Why are they closing for an eclipse? So the, the way kids I can, understand, in case the world it? ends, Jason, for, for safety not purposes. Experience? Yeah, Jason, the only way I can understand it is almost like the, there's a traffic concern, I think. They're oh. thinking that I think what they what they imagine is a bunch of people are going to drive out onto the highways and roads and stop oh. and get out of their cars to watch the eclipse. I think that's I, the idea. They're they're talking on the news like HEB is going to shut down because it I went through COVID and they still had groceries. You're telling me that just because a million dumbasses are coming to town because they think they have to stand in a field to watch the sun go dark for a little while. Like HEB is going to shut down. Hey, Hell no. Gentlemen, let me tell you where the place is supposed to be. The place is supposed to be Waxahachie, Texas. If my parents are watching tonight, they're preparing right now. So Monday is also their birthday. My parents are born on the same day. They're going to be awesome. They're going to Waxahachie to make sure they're in Waxahachie, Waxahachie and Ennis. The two rivals are apparently that is the place to be in the whole state of Texas for like the most totalness of eclipse. They're estimating 100,000 are coming to Waxahachie and an extra 150,000 are coming to Ennis, which means there will be no beer in Rigger Springs. If you know that area, <laughs> no beer in Rigger Springs next Monday at about 150. Uh, but that's where apparently you're supposed to go. But kids, be careful. Use the eclipse glasses or make a pinhole camera. Don't stare at the sun. Don't do that during an eclipse. You want to hear how crazy people are? So my stepbrother has some property just north of Texarkana. We were up there this weekend for, for the little Easter events. Mm -hmm. They have a field, and the field is a little over two and a half acres. People are paying $500 for the night before to camp out there to get a spot to watch the eclipse to five hundred dollars to pitch your tent in a field it's just it's so that is so weird to me like it's cool again yeah. it's not like my parents are making special plans right they live in this town they got that's where they're going to be but yeah that is weird to me chance because um it's a solar eclipse meaning all you have to do is find a spot where you can see the, the sun, sun. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and trust me, it's you'll notice. Like if you've never witnessed, it's almost like people don't know what a solar eclipse is. Like okay, once you understand, you know what it is, right? Like it's not like it's gonna go full blast daylight, complete mm -hmm. darkness, daylight in the span no, it's not of like a light seconds. switch where you turn it on and off, where it's like no. light on, light off, light on, light off. It's, it's a gradual process. It's gonna take a look. It's like the it's like the roof at NRG <laughs> or. Or the roof at Minute Maid. Or, I mean, it takes a little bit. I think we just had a chance eclipse over on the left. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's well done right there. Well, somebody somebody told me that you're not supposed to, like, uh. let your pets go outside. Like, am I supposed to be worried that my dog's going to get blinded sleeping his fat butt in the chair in my house while I work from home in case it comes through the window? Well, no. my, dog, my dog knows it gets dark. I'm going to put some glasses on him. He'll be just fine.
but dog Brody with an R will. <laughs> well, that little bastard, he can go do what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And for Chris Bennett, no, there will not be a special Eclipse Day edition of The Outsiders. We'll go just Wednesday next week at, uh, at 8.30. But we do appreciate you asking that question. Thanks to everybody uh, for jumping in the Specs chat. I'm just uh, cruising here to make sure. Um, oh, there you go. See? <laughs> LFG didn't know. I didn't have the Rager Springs reference in my bingo card for tonight. I appreciate you for uh, for recognizing that one. Yes. Oh my God, Darwin, you win. You win the chats tonight. Uh oh, here we go. Darwin, I think started drinking earlier. Darwin says I've had too much Crown Royal. I am staring at the ceiling fan on mock screen. <laughs> it's in a reflection, or should I tell him to turn it off on the deck? Chance that fan we're seeing is that. Is that a reflection? Hang on, let's check it out. Is that a reflection or is that outside? No, that's outside. That's no, outside. it's a reflection. It's really? a reflection. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe I've had too much Crown Royal. It looks like it's outside to me. It too really kind of does. What is it? Oh, it's too much cucumber for Jason. Yeah, too <laughs> much cucumber. That's fantastic. It's so fun. I was on a I was on a, one of those WebEx calls for work, and you know how they have the fake background? Well, I guess in some computer computer glitch. Another office mate walked in and was like doing paperwork. And so it's on her screen. It's like this beach scene, except for there's a lady in the back, like filing shit on a chair. <laughs> We're like, uh, I think you have something going on. And she's like, no, it's a fake screen. We're like, yeah, except for somebody's on it. See, I do miss that about COVID. Like, did y'all ever see the lawyer that when they were doing the Zoom call courts and he tried to get on with the judge and it popped up a picture of a cat? Yes. And the judge is like, do you think this is funny? He's like, I really don't, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get it. Could somebody help me? <laughs> yeah. And when and when he felt the need to tell the judge, I am not a cat. That was the <laughs> best part. He officially wanted to say, by the way, I'm not a cat. I want to in the records. <laughs> Put down the bunny. <laughs> if you have a, what do they call it? The stenographer, the, please tell the <laughs> official records. I am not a kitty cat. Please, please. Oh. I don't need that in my record. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to go ahead and wrap up an outsider show. Jeff Ketchum is now, what is this? Is this the collar for four? Yeah, Jeff three. Ketchum is a cat. Three. It's 0 for 3. He, he's he's one episode away from breaking Michael Griffin's no-show after saying you're coming record. That's right. Michael eventually showed up. He did eventually show up. Hopefully, Jeff Ketchum will eventually show up. But before we get out of here, Bo, let's get a little uh, – we'll get Poncho their love, but I think we also need to give these folks a little love, a little stuffed Cajun meat market, oh. Cajun time. Tis the season. Crawfish is back. And they're starting to get the wild caught in, so you're starting to get the better product. Now is the time. If you're planning on having a, a boil, stuffed is your place. For the supplies, for all the, the crawfish you need, you can get it boiled there. They have the etouffee if you want it just already done. They have the gumbo. They have nine kinds of sausage, amazing sausage. They have multiple flavors of boudin. They have the meat pies. If you want to do Cajun right, stuffed Cajun meat market. Meat pies. I'm telling you, my this is. Hey, Chad, you you've been to this point now. My daughter is going to work for the first time this weekend. Her oh, first okay. paying job, where she's going to have to, you know, pay taxes. Damn she right. is going to work at a crawfish boil at Cajun Fest in Jonestown mm. for my neighbor's company, Who Do Crawfish. Sweet. Hence the. Do they need it? Do they need anybody else? <laughs> yeah, Jason, we can get you again. <laughs> There it is. You have it to show done. up. <laughs> oh, God damn it. That's Well, that's it. It's they, the they, show up part. Yeah, they, they can pay you in free poncho shirts and moon mist. So, yeah, <laughs> if you want to come see the Parkway, it's just like the Outsiders. Since Bo just mentioned it, and he is clearly wearing one tonight, let's remind you it is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Look at that. Bo's rocking the old poncho T-shirt. Jason has got the poncho. Look at that bad boy. I myself have the Fort Davis going on tonight with the Mother of Pearl snaps. It is a lovely, lovely garment. Ponchooutdoors.com. But this green bad boy over here is the Magnolia. Know that little yellow, the zipper for the secret phone pocket? Yeah, it's yellow. Masters, the flag, details. That's what Poncho's into. Ponchooutdoors.com. Chad, why do you think I was so up y'all's ass this week or today or two days ago to get your ponchos ordered? 
Mm -hmm. Because I have a master's party that my wife is throwing, and I wanted the Magnolia shirt. So I'm actually paying to expedite the shipping to wow. get our order in before Friday. So I needed y'all's shirt order so I could order my Magnolia. So for my party, I could have the green one. So you got that on the way right now. It. I got the shipping confirmation about 5 o'clock this afternoon. That is good stuff. Shout out, to, shout out to Poncho. Jason has a whole store worth of shirts in a box. Yeah, they got a lot of great stuff, and the Magnolia is just the latest in a great line. PonchoOutdoors.com. Thanks to them for their great support. Thanks to everybody for jumping in the Specs chat. Up over 500 folks in there as we get ready to close the doors. We appreciate that. We appreciate being able to see Jason Dick once again. Glad to have you back, sir. Uh, it was good to be at full power, the full quad box tonight. Bo didn't have to run that wing T offense. It, it gets him tired, man. He can't get to the edge like he used to be able to. Chance Mock will right. slowly close those doors for you as we get ready for the I'll, I'll make Jason a deal. Day. If he makes it, if he if he completes the hat trick and gets on three shows in a row, the fourth show will be a four loco day. <laughs> ah. There it is. So I now it's on you, loco sir. Day. Bo will do that four loco. Bo, Bo enjoyed the four loco show. That yeah, yeah I, I had a good time. So what? I don't know if it'll be the America four loco or yeah. a different flavor. But if you make the hat trick, the loco's coming out. That's what happened to me, man. I had a four loco day. It knocked me out for a month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed it way more than he thought he would. All right. That is your outsiders for this week. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, and get your notifications for Orange Bloods Live. We appreciate you supporting the show. We'll be back next Wednesday night at 830. Until then, y'all have a great week. We are the Outsiders. We are back at full power, and we are legitimately worth it.